For as long as I've been alive and speaking, this unfortunately has been the voice that has come out of me. <laughs> so as surprised as you all are, please imagine the shock of my parents when little four-year-old Stacy approached them one day, apropos of nothing, and said, I'm ready for preschool today! <laughs> they didn't know what to do with that one. Uh, I'm 32, people have a hard time like gauging my age because of how my voice sounds. I know I sound like I'm like a 1950s DJ or a film noir character. Like, I don't live in a retirement community, but I'm pretty sure if I cold called one, they'd be like, come right on down, ma'am. You grew up during the Great Depression. <laughs> and I'm just waiting to go into one of those facilities, frankly. It looks like a good time. Uh, I'm a very shy person. Is anyone else here very bad at judging social cues. That sounds like a reasonable response to that. Um, I have recently learned that people won't always say to you that they want you to leave their home. <laughs> this miffs me a little bit because I don't even want to leave my home to begin with. It takes a lot of energy for me to enter into someone else's home. And then I feel like after I get acclimated, they're like, please leave. But they won't say that. People have code words that they'll use and I've become very good at reading between the lines. The most frequently used code word is, oh, it's getting pretty late. <laughs> if you're out at a place and someone says, oh, it's getting pretty late, that is a code word that means get out. <laughs> Just leave and never come back. Uh, but the last time I heard that, I did not know that at the time. So someone said, oh, Stacy, it's getting pretty late. And I looked at the clock on the wall. It was 12.30 a.m. And I said, goodness, you're right. Better get me a blanket. And I stood in the middle of the room entertaining everyone until one by one they fell asleep. It was, I was like a jiggly puff that came to life. And then I realized before I knew it, it was 5 a.m. and I was like, better make eggs for everyone. I stayed at the house until 8 a.m. Luckily, I know more things now. Um, I, I'm from Washington, D.C. I use a lot of public transportation. Um, I would, thank you. But yes, we love public transport. Wonderful. Um, I was waiting for my train the other day, and a train pulled in behind me, and a bunch of people got out of it, including this uh, gentleman who was walking with look, what looked like a four or five year old daughter. And then the daughter saw me and she ran to me and she said, Mommy, it's me! <laughs> and I've got to say, I was a little confused. Uh, but I looked at her and I said, Yes, I'm here! <laughs> because I didn't want to disappoint anyone. <laughs> that is mission critical for me. I just didn't want to disappoint anyone. And then the father ran over to her and picked her up and was like, ma'am, I'm so sorry, she does this to everyone, and then took her away, and she waved at me. And I, here's the thing. <laughs> I'm so anxious of a person, I was looking at this whole interaction and I said, is it possible? <laughs> like, is it possible he got my egg somehow and this child found me on the train platform? <laughs> I've never seen her again. But I would just like her to know I've got a wonderful college savings account all set up for her. She is going to be good to go wherever. Uh, I'm going to end with this. I have recently realized I spend too much money on Uber. <laughs> and you might be saying, you hypocrite. You just talk about public transport. I know. I, I have a, a problem. I try, I try to take the public transportation. I can't, sometimes I can't do it. And then I take the Uber. Anyway, what I like most about Uber is what I like to call the silent Uber. When you get in and no words are exchanged, not even between you and the driver. Are you being kidnapped? Who cares? I just love that, that silence. And the other day I was in what I thought was a silent Uber and the Uber driver was like, how are you doing today, ma'am? This was like 15 minutes into the ride. And I said, oh, I'm 
I'm fine, thank you. How are you? And he said, not good. And I was like, all right, we're really in for a ride now. <laughs> and I was like, that's too bad, what happened? And he's like, well, my daughter won't talk to me. And I said, that's, that's too bad. My daughter won't talk to me either. 